we are live now. Today is November 19, 2015, and we are starting a, a webinar about hybridization. I will share my controls with friends. Okay. Steven. Gaby. All right. Um, so Peter asked me to give a short summary on hybridization. So I will cover the main topics of DNA and hybridization. The first thing to explain is that uh, DNA hybridization is not something new. Um, the humanity, all the humanity, is a hybrid species. We are the hybrids which contain both the ancestral genetics from earthly animals, earthly primates, earthly monkeys, and from aliens. Ancient aliens came to Earth historically in all times, before Atlantis, during Atlantis, after Atlantis, during the Egypt, the uh, Jewish exile from the Egypt, during uh, times of old ancient China, ancient Middle Asia, ancient Americas, they all have been there. And they contributed to human genome. So we are now a mixture of uh, many earthly races and many alien races. So why would the aliens come to Earth and hybridize with humans? The first reason would be that often, especially in very ancient times, before human appe humans appeared on Earth, these were the refugees from their wars, from their planet destructions, who came to Earth and just settled here. And for most of the aliens, the Earth would be a hostile environment in terms of uh, air and water and electromagnetic and uh, gravity, electromagnetic radiation and gravity, it all will be different for the biology. So they would have to adjust. And especially they would have to adjust to the vibration of the Earth, which, which is different. So they lived here in artificial environments, basically in domed cities and where the space suits and or whatever, a protective field that they had to use to survive on Earth. And they uh, intentionally created the uh, the humans as vessels to carry, to, to be able to incarnate in humans and live on Earth uh, in a more suitable form. So they took some of their DNA so and some of their monkey DNA or whatever, prehistoric human DNA, and mixed together using their genetic engineering and created a human which would be more advanced and be a better vessel for their advanced souls. And initially the, huma uh, the Earth was higher dimensional. It was higher dimensional. The aliens were able to live here more comfortably. And the highest point for the humanity was Atlantis. In Atlantis the vibration was high and the Aliens walked on the street. It was an open galactic society, and the humans were their highest at our highest point. And then there was self-destruction. Basically, the 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 big cat catastrophe, the World War, which caused the fall of humanity and the fall of the vibration of uh, of the Earth. So we went dimensionally. We shifted dimensionally down. It was a big catastrophe for humanity, and um, we are the Atlanteans who incarnate now and are going to fix that trauma, are going to heal that trauma. We are hybrids in many ways. We consist of many races. The main races is historically uh, who contributed, historically the main races who contributed to uh, human genetics were, again, primates from Earth, the human, uh, the earthly primates, the, the earthly ancestors. Then the aliens were 
Pleiadians, and related to them are Nordics and Orions, same type of major genetics, basic human genetics. Um, Lyrans, Yael, a bit of Arcturians, Anunnaki, a little bit of uh, ancient Syrians from Sirius, a bit of Martians, possibly Elohim, we haven't confirmed that yet. The Greys, but the Greys is a separate story, we'll tell, tell you about more about it. Yael, Tall Greys, Yael. Andromedans, and many more, but I call kind of in, in order of proportional representation, roughly, very roughly, very roughly. And reptilians, of course, I forgot reptilians, and reptilians. Hmm. All right, so some of those were refugees, obviously, and others just were races who went around the universe and just seeded themselves. So they wouldn't live here, but they would contribute their genetics uh, for many reasons. And one of the reasons, it's nice to be related to a growing race. So now as humanity grows and blossoms, blossoms, and we are about to ascend to next dimension, which would take maybe 100, 200 years, maybe five, five to five or more generations, three to eight generations. So when we come out to the galactic community, being related to us is an honor and a practical advantage. So we will have, when we could go out, we'll have brothers and sisters, and as relatives they would be entitled to to communicate to us first, so that's also interesting for them. For many positive races, it's just the idea of service. If their genes are contributing to our ascension, to our evolution, to our improvement, they would eagerly contribute their genes. And it might happen on a race level, as a race contributing the genes, or on individual level, when individual aliens would contribute the genes. So that happened in distant past, in uh, middle centuries, medieval times, recent history, and continues to happen right now. <sighs> yes, that happens. Mm. Understand that they are coming from a different dimension. All 95% of the aliens are coming from a different world, from a different dimension. And it is the dimension up. Usually it goes under the name fourth density or fourth dimension. Sometimes the numbering system is different, so don't be worried if they call it fifth dimension or sixth dimension or seventh dimension. It's, it's really all relative, it depends how you count the levels, how many steps up. But most of the, of our alien friends come from whatever you call it, fourth density. And um, the main property, what was the difference between our density and their density? The main property is telepathy. They are telepathic. So when you hear the stories about aliens coming and talking in your head and uh, talking to each other without opening the mouth, uh, these are mostly true stories. And um, they come here to, many good friends come here to help us. Many good friends come here to help us. What is the reason for them to shift down dimensionally and be helping us? There are many reasons, but for good ones, the main reason is of service and helping us to survive. Basically, as you know, we are in a crisis and we have way down and way up, one way going down and one way going up. And obviously, they want to help us going up. And as we go up, we will contribute to the galaxy and to the universe because our culture is unique in many ways 
and we are full of life. The humanity is full of life. And that's not always true for other alien races. Some of them are old and some of them are dying. We are young and full of life. Our genetics is unique in many ways that we are carrying lots of talents which will be developed and opened as we go up dimensionally. They all they're dormant. They all they're dormant the talents. Um, we know from many sources, our main sources of information are channeling and witnesses who come from this world. Some of the humans shift back and forth. They've been taken and returned back. And also astral travel. Some people just astral travel and know. So people go there and come back and tell the stories how it is out there. And telepathy is true. Telepathy is true. Um, also, we, we learned that when our genetically, genetically humans from the Earth, when our humans go there, they can start developing telepathy very fast. Especially if humans are taken there as children, they de develop full-blown telepathy. Uh, and they learn the telepathic language of the aliens. And uh, it is not something which is not present in our genetics. It's only the learn we are capable of telepathy. We just need to learn it from the childhood. And also the vibration of their higher dimension is conducive, promoting, helping telepathy. So as you are there, you are much more telepathic than you are here. Down on Earth, it's more difficult to be telepathic, but it's also possible. Other talents are psychic talents, psychic ability to see the future, to change the future, to see the past, see the dimensions, speak to the spirits, uh, astral travel, all of this in, is included in psychic abilities. Understand also that um, we are talking to more than one timeline of their higher dimensions. It's multiple storylines, multiple timelines. We are speaking to people from the future, from the parallel present in the fourth density. Hmm, I don't know if you spoke from, to people from the past, but certainly from the future for sure. And we're also speaking to the spirit world, which is even farther dimensionally from us. <sighs> Hybridization. So this hybridization is helping us to get those abilities. So when we get, historically and now, when we get this set of genetics, it all, in most cases, helps us to get used to this higher dimension. And the humanity, the Earth, is shifting right now, gradually, year by year, day by day, we are shifting towards the fourth density, fourth dimension. And again, the typical signature, typical signs of this four-dimensional life is psychic abilities, telepathic abilities, premonition, feeling the future, uh, déjà vu, uh, shifting between different timelines, flexibility of the future and flexibility of the past. The past is also becomes flexible. Understand that this physical life is an incarnation and it is a spirit who has a dream. You are an eternal spirit having a dream. And when you have a dream, it's your dream, but in your dream you meet other spirits having their own dreams. So every human you are meet, meeting here is another spirit who has it, their own dream. And some of their common past is fixed, but some of their past is different for every human you meet. So, people discover it right now, it's called Mandela Effect, Mandela, you just ask people about common things which everybody remembers, and you realize that some of the memories are different because these souls come from different pasts and meet with you in this present from different past, from different timelines. And also, they also go in different timelines in the future. So, how you define where you will end up? By your vibration? by your intention and by following your highest excitement, by following your intuition, creativity, and by thinking positive. So if you think positive, 
it's more likely that you will end up in a positive timeline and your future will be bright. You will end up in humanity which becomes successful, becomes a successful member of the galaxy, and brings the light to the galaxy and the universe. If you are caught in fear and anger and resentment, you might end up in a negative timeline where the humanity destroys itself or goes in different downhill spiral. So all is defined by your present status of vibration, state of vibration. So smile, choose the positive side. Feed the good wolf. Feed the, the white wolf. Um, a good movie to watch about is, it is called Tomorrow's Land. This year, two wonderful movies came out which help you understand the nature of the reality. It's Tomorrowland and it is Inside Out. I recommend highly both. It's very spiritual, very uh, transforming movies. Now, the hybridization. As you are dreaming, you define the level of your hybridization. The nature of the reality is not fixed. You can choose what hybrid you are. The life is so crazy, you can choose. Your excitement drives your hybridization. If you believe you are a Pleiadian hybrid, your DNA gradually, you shift to the reality, to the timeline, when you become more and more of a Pleiadian hybrid. You just wake up one morning and you think, hmm, I am Pleiadian. Oh, I had a past life in Pleiades. And if you think that you are Arcturian or Yael or Tall Grey or a reptilian, many of our friends have great reptilian connection and it can be positive as well. Or a Syrian hybrid or Andromedan hybrid. Andromeda is a galaxy, but there are humans in Andromeda. So it's up to you which hybrid, you, which idea you resonate most. As you investigate it, you find more and more proofs that it is true. So your focus of, of attention defines your reality in very real way. If you focus on negative things, Oh, I have been abducted by the aliens. Or I had terrible implants. Or they messed up my health. Or, you know, they control my life. Or I lost that, that, and that. Or I will die someday. You will not die. But if you're obsessed, obsessed with that, or I'm angry at that and that, or I feel sorry about that and that, you define your reality and uh, you get more and more proofs that the things are the way they are. So if you doubt, you get proofs which feed your doubt, and you end up in a dark side. If you choose to look at the bright side, if you choose to see the glass of water half full, it's full of water, there is water in it, a drink, a symbol of life, then you find the proofs that things go well. So focus, be practical, but focus on good side. You have to be aware of negativity, you have to be aware of conspiracies, of the politics, but dive there, investigate, and don't forget to come back and focus on positive things. It's what your focus of attention is, what defines the proofs you get. So now I'm talking to so many wonderful light workers, so many wonderful hybrid star seeds, people visiting alien worlds, the hybrids uh, who have relatives in alien worlds. I get daily proofs of that reality, daily proofs, and some of that is through the words of others, and some of that is through my personal experience, like personal experience. They're tiny, but undeniable personal proofs. And the best ones are when the spirits help you. Like on uh, yesterday's broadcast, I mentioned one word which colored everything dark. And when I look at this broadcast, I felt that, you know, it wasn't a good word to use. It was the word 
death. But it wasn't a place where it took the bright side and turned it down. When I watched the recording, oh, my friends blurred it so you can't really hear that word. Everything else just goes smooth, but the word death is just wiped out from it. It's like wiped out. So we are dealing with the spirits and the aliens, friendly aliens, who are much involved in what we are doing. We are blessed by their guidance and we are thankful for that. The next question is the star children, star children up there, the hybrid children. So the aliens ran the alien hybridization program and continue to run it, where they take the DNA from humans and mix with their DNA and produce children up there. And uh, it's very well documented. Many people visited, visited those children, have been on those ships and planets where these children live, hybrid children. And these children look partly human, partly non-human, and they're hybridized to many different races. Uh, children, human and Liran hybrid look a little more like cats, and uh, Lirans usually have bigger litters, meaning they, have, they birth, give birth to many children at once, so they have lots of brothers and sisters. Hybrids with Pleiadians, they in their culture, they now are very much ecological, so they like to absorb sunlight and be like plants, so they, they uh, genetically pro produce the chlorophyll in their skin, so they're all green, so they can feed off natural light. So they choose to be green, but if they wish to change color, they, like we paint our skin, they can genetically modify their skin and become of any color, blue, white, uh, black, brown, whatever, purple. So there is a lot of blue Pleiadians of Nordic descent. Um, yeah, yellow children look like tall greys. Actually, there is a variety. Some of them look exactly like humans, and some of them look like greys, and there is all variants. And again, they, they are brought up in their cultures, and at the moment, our friends deal, uh, treat the hybrid children in, with great respect and give them all citizen rights, all rights of the of their culture, they bring them up with the families and respect the the wishes of those children. And of course, the children, because they have human parents, they take the DNA from here. They are connected to us. They wish to visit us, and they invite parents to come up there. So this is a big part of the culture. So if you have children up there, be ready to visit them. And when their doors will be open, when the borders will be open, when the open contact will happen, then this would be the first beings from from alien worlds who will who will visit us, our direct relatives, our children. Many of you, many of us, have have one, two, three, several children up there, and we are looking forward to see them coming down and visiting us. For some of them, living on Earth may be not easy, but visiting would be wonderful, and reunions would be wonderful. And again, at some, when, some point when the doors of the borders of the Earth will be lifted, then we'll be, vi we'll be able to visit them in their worlds and, uh, and see how they live, see their culture through, uh, and be introduced by our direct relatives to them. So this is wonderful. Okay, the dark side of the hybridization program was when uh, an alien race of zeta grays, small grays, uh, exchanged the right to do the hybridization. Uh, they negotiated with their world governments and exchanged the right for uh, providing certain military technologies or just some technologies it's like propulsion and free energy technologies and transdimensional shift technologies like portal portals, anti-gravity, free energy, and um, possibly a little bit of mind control and propulsion. These were 
uh, as I understand, the main technologies which were discussed and transferred. In exchange for basic technologies, they got the right to uh, do the hybridization. So the government sort of secretly approved that. And at that point, uh, they didn't have a good technology for hybridizing and producing hybrid children, so and also for taking humans. They didn't have it, they didn't do it right. And they didn't really care about our suffering. So they did it in the most technically efficient way, but they didn't realize how damaging it was for the abductees to be taken and and hybridized and uh, returned back. They returned back the humans, but the humans were traumatized by the man managing of them. So that happened in the 60s, maybe 50s, and because the, the Zeta Grays have the time travel capacity, they went back in time and and uh, uh, things happened even, even in, the, in the past. Uh, they had an excuse for doing it because there are uh, races old and dying and genetically um, damaged. They needed, uh, they, they take good genes from everywhere and produce a new hybrids and use these hybrids as incarnation vessels for their souls. So there is a good reason for that, but the way they did it was not, it was secret and not very beneficial for Earth and uh, not very beneficial from, not very proper from the galactic perspective. It's not the, the, way, the way the things should be done. You don't do it secretly and don't give military governments the, the, the weapons. Anyway, that agreement fell apart very fast. Basically, the Zeta continued the hybridization, the humans continued their stuff, but they, continued, uh, they stopped collaborating, so they started fighting each other. And because they just have very advanced technology, <clears throat> basically the fight was unequal. In any case, they produced lots of hybrids, and uh, many hybrids died, and some of the hybrids were treated not well by human standards. But in any case, they created several hybrid races, and those races became independent, and um, one of those races is Yael, and here is a time shift paradox because the Zetas come from a different reality, the time for them is very different. And again, Yael are coming from a different reality and the time frame for them is very different. So, in one in one understanding, the Yael are produced from modern humans and our future descendants. On the other hand, they're, they're also our ancestors, so it's a time jump and Yael have been here for the whole history of the humanity which is mind-boggling, it's hard to understand, I really don't understand it, just the information I got and I just have to live with it. We produced hybrid children, they became a Yale race, and we are descendants of the Yale race. There is a loop closed. In any case, the Zetas are now extinguished from our reality, they are not permitted to abduct people and do the hybridization without their conscious consent, so they, they will have to ask you a physical mind, they have to ask you if you agree for that, and it's up to you whether you agree or not. But basically, now the Earth is under Earth outside, outside of the Earth, the solar system is under the control of beneficial, benevolent, positive alien races who make sure the the Zetas don't come. Also, the negative Orions and negative reptilians are kept away from us. So, so that hybridization program is stopped at the moment. The, although their the children live there in their worlds, and uh, and it's uh, uh, you know a concern for us how well they are treated. Many of them are now adults already, and some of them are advanced age. The new hybridization program is started only, which is voluntary. So there is a new voluntary hybridization program run by our friends, uh, Pleiadian, Arcturian, uh, Liran, um, good reptilian called uh, Lashunda, Fendorian, uh, Yael, I think I mentioned everybody, Arcturian, Pleiadian, uh, Yael, uh, Fendorian, Lashunda, that should be a sixth one. Um, so basically you can volunteer to donate your genetic material 
and they will borrow it transdimensionally. So you know, you normally wouldn't even notice that they took your sperm or your egg for the hybridization. Some people might, some women might feel uh, slightly pregnant temporarily, like for a week or two, and then it kind of goes away. Uh, again, you the, you have to consciously volunteer, and the way to volunteer, you might try just speaking to them. They don't read your mind, they, so you have to say it aloud in a prayer manner, like, my dear alien friends, you name the race which you invite, or the alliance of races, like Gurk Fitnir is one of those, so you might invite Gurk Fitnir and say, I want to provide my material, genetic material, my genetics, my DNA for hybridization to produce a child in your world. Or you can specifically say in which culture. Um, to make sure you might want to send an electronic message, we created an email account which they check. It's called sign up to go at gmail.com, sign up to go at gmail.com. So you might just send a mail and uh, say that in plain English or whatever language you like. Um, and they check the, those emails and take into consideration. When they have, when you send a mail, it's kind of a physical proof that you're really consenting, you're really ready. Another form is anonymous. There is anonymous form on a, on a website, humancolony.org, and there you can anonymously submit your application, and they trace you just through electronic traces. They can the aliens can find out who you are, so you don't really have to say your name. So you also ask what specifically do you want. And there are multiple uh, options. One is to visit them in, uh, we call it human colony, but basically it's a basis, several bases where human and aliens, uh, friendly aliens come in contact and uh, learn many things. Humans explain how we live and aliens teach us mainly telepathy, but many other things, teach us galactic culture. Uh, so visiting the colonies, uh, donating your DNA for the hybridization up there, inviting alien DNA for hybridization down here. Uh, so basically, if you want a hybrid child, you can invite some of the alien DNA to be contributed to the child which we will produce with, their, with your mate. And then uh, DNA infusions. DNA infusions, if you want to receive some of the alien DNA, you can invite that. Um, let me explain a little bit of uh, DNA infusions. DNA infusions are when um, you say which of the alien DNA you want, one of the above, or whatever, and um, they gradually create it in you. So they do transdimensional synthesis, so they holographically create uh, holographic cells in your, mostly in your brain, and in the heart and other parts of the important essential parts of the body. So the whole, not the whole body, but some parts of the body will have artificial cells which will create, will have uh, hybrid alien plus human DNA and they gradually become materialized and they spread all over the body or all over the organ, all over the brain and and uh, you get this new infusion, new DNA. So you will have your DNA plus a little bit of alien and it usually just a few percent here and there to give you more talents and usually they think about what specific talents they, they give. If you know a specific alien, you might ask for their specific DNA. So I asked for Takur DNA, and uh, and um, so you, you can ask for the same. Um, for me, it was more symbolic. I wanted to be related to her. Um, any questions so far? Yes, I had a question, Max. Yes. Um, what's really interesting about the pregnancy of many women or those that feel that they're pregnant have the symptoms of it, um, of the hybridization, it is very interesting that 
some women can carry uh, alien genetics within them for a good what two or three months, and then all of a sudden they're not pregnant anymore. And and I've seen on documentaries of of this going on, um, which is really interesting, you know, because many women out there feel like. Well, what's going on? You know, I, I'm. How can I be pregnant? Um, when you know, maybe there wasn't you know someone around to get them pregnant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that is fascinating. You know, that whole subject unto itself, and even that even most women in, in the world wouldn't uh, be aware unless they understand this these concepts that it's a possibility that they are their genetics are being borrowed or incubation or some type of carrying uh, the mixture of the DNA within the woman for the first two or three months. And then the, so, all of a sudden they're not pregnant anymore. So, so that is how <laughs> I like to expand to that. Could you is that I don't think it's well it's, I don't think it's it's interesting sometimes. Um, like to understand a little bit more because um, sometimes symptom became more than symptom it become look like some feel like a real. Now is there any way to for the woman to kind of more engage so that we are a little bit more consciously aware. For example, like I see sometimes babies' hands and drawings. How can I know uh, it is not just imagining or actually remembering, digging out from subconscious mind? Like confirmation and more, you know, Hey, you did a good job. Here's your baby's picture. Um, and the answer is you define your reality. <laughs> uh, the nature of the reality is such that the more you doubt, the more you look for confirmation, the less confirmation you get. I learned it myself hard way. If you start questioning everything, it just falls apart and uh, you get the mainstream point of view and usually it's very depressing. <laughs> and if you start playing alone and uh, just ignore the doubt and pl give some faith, do a leap of faith and stay positive, then uh, things, you get positive confirmations. Uh, understand also that you shift between different realities. You you shift daily and even every few, like with hourly, you shift between different realities. You exist in multiple dimensions, multiple realities. When you shift down to 3D, mainstream life, you get all their confirmations, your life becomes 3D. You shift down, you get all this negativity, all the proofs, all the sicknesses, all the, you shift up in 4D, for the density, whatever, and things become miraculous. And I found that, like, I go to those, how do you call them, health fairs, and I get uh, Reiki from Reiki and other healing and maybe psychic uh, tarot reading or something, uh, or psychic session from several different people. By the end of going, like, through three hours of ascension, like, assisted ascension, Today's evening assisted ascension. I get so high just from having Reiki done on me, from me willing to be there on a high level, from uh, the intent, being around people like Jim, enlightened people or an, of high vibration, just shifts you up. And by the end, miracles start happening just, just by themselves. So as, as you shift, you get there and things become wonderful. Again, for us, the hybrids, all of us are the hybrids. For us, the hybrids, it's usually not as easy to stay there forever. So to keep things going, to keep your computer going, working fine, to keep your finances going fine, you have to shift back and forth. So 
be prepared to shift back and forth to 3D, 4D, 3D, 4D. Uh, very practical material, very spiritual, dreamlike world. But stay positive in either direction, in either place, and you create that reality which is good for you. So um, now, specifically about drawings of the children, drawing uh, what what hybrid are you carrying? When you are there, you have better chance on 4D. Say when you are meditating, when you're in positive mood, you have perfect chance to speak to your child, to speak the soul of the, to the soul of the child, to speak to the parents of your child. So usually, the hybrid ch child has more than two parents. It could be three or four, or even more. It would be you, another human, male, female. So you have to have like for the basis, you have to have male, female, and it could be uh, an alien and another alien, a pair of them, or it could be you and a human hybrid. So it will be a hybridization between human and already partially non-human, and another pair, pair of. Uh, parents from the alien world who will bring up the child. So all of the above, they all can feel, be related. So in, a, in essence, when we are, we are talking about hybrid children, usually you are not the father of a hybrid child or a mother. You are genetically more like grandmother. You carry only a quarter of their DNA or plus minus because it's not exactly fixed. But roughly you carry a quarter of their DNA, not half of their DNA. Usually for a human child, you carry half of their DNA. You can contribute half of their DNA. Mm. So, talking to channelers allows to solve these mysteries, and especially talking to channelers in a positive manner allows to create the positive reality where these dreams becomes very positive. And your contact with this child is, you, you can actually channel, people can actually channel this child and you can speak to the child. So that becomes very positive, and then as they grow, they also can have conversations with the child. So, so, and and someday, someday you can meet them. Maybe it will be a few years from now. Maybe it will be like ten years or fifteen years from now. But uh, our estimate is that by year two thousand thirty, there will be already all things in place for us to meet the children. We will have already some some sort of gradually opening of the borders. Uh, just remember how the Soviet Union opened their border or how European Union accepted new members. It was a trial period, a certain period for incorporation, but then the borders are fully open and people start going back and forth very easily. So so by year 2050, most likely, we'll, we'll have our borders fully open and people will go up and down freely. So. You just need to live another 35 years and you will be able to visit them at will without the problem. So, so creating, cre carrying the hybrid child is an honor and a, a bliss. Um, in the past, I know some of the women who carried hybrid children, uh, the, the technologies were not good and they had uh, mischiefs happening to their reproductive organs. Now the technologies are better, and especially if you treat, you have been in contact with Girk Fitnier, they have pretty good technology. Their success rate is high, and uh, they they know that what what they are doing. It is very beneficial for the child to be carried by their uh, direct genetically related mother, again because of the immunity uh, alignment. And because of the vibrational alignment, the child is born, basically, the first weeks of the life of this hybrid child, of the fetus, are on Earth. So they carry this Earth vibration. So later for them, it will be much easier to come to Earth and just be here. The aliens born there, or hybrids born up there, and who developed up there, the vibration of Earth is more foreign for them, so it's much more difficult for them to come here. So the the hybrid children conceived here would have better chances to come here and teach us galactic languages, galactic culture, galactic technologies. And they are eager, they are prepared, that's their life mission to 
come be diplomats, missionaries, uh, representatives, spokespeople. That is, we have tons of confirmations that it is so true. Max, uh, can I yes. ask? Yes. Oh. Can I ask you one more question related to that uh, pregnancy? Uh, could you tell me the role of the moon, the cycle of the moon? It seems to have a significant influence on me, and I would imagine probably other women as well. Yeah, we all are under influence. Um, just, you know, without looking at the sky, you can often tell which, which phase of the moon is there because mm -hmm. we just feel like we're, the night of the no moon or the, the day before and after, like, how do you call it? Zero moon? I don't know the word. Dark moon, whatever. Uh, you just have jumps of this, your mood up and down, and usually it's like, oh, falling down. Everything is fine, but you have no energy whatsoever. And... It's it's very easy to catch sickness if you overwork on that day because the moon is essential for uh, for you to keep the the balance. Um, I know the study on that topic. Gaclin, French researcher, astrologist Gaclin, he did. He is the most respected uh, researcher in the area who did real biomedical studies studying the effects of the. Uh, planets on um, health and um, actually relation to genetics. There is tons of that which we don't know and obviously it's not studied by mainstream science. Uh, Gaclin on astrology and genetics. Uh, I think his studies are very interesting. Would you mind to spell that for me? G O C K L E E N. If you Google that genetics astrology, you'll get to the right place. You have to do all three words, otherwise it wouldn't come up. Maybe I misspelled a little bit, but I think more or less. It's okay. Uh, it I have was a one French name, so yes. Uh, okay, I have one more question, but I will let other people go. No problem, no problem. Go ahead. Go oh. ahead. Okay. So if the, this is a fundamental question about the, um, the, if soul is infinite, why any one alien or anybody else needs our DNA vessel to survive? Can they just reincarnate and pick other vessel or going back to spirit? It's for the physicality of the body. I guess I'm trying to look for why the human hybridization. Um, it's nice that you don't understand because I don't understand why you don't understand. I think it's obvious. Um, it's a game. It's a nice experience to live a physical life. That's what Brian just said. Um, they want to play our toys. Is it a good answer? They want to play our toys. They want to smell our flowers experience all rain, the fall, and uh, uh, the sex, and uh, all of that. They wanted to experience the density, third dimensional density. They want to explore things, that, you know, when you're different densities, the, the one thing, the range of emotion, the, the whole experience, this grand experience, that's really what it comes down to. That's good, because as long as it's not desperate, right, because it's something the way it's introduced, with desperate attempt, we must help them. It's not like we must help them. It's an option we're willing to go along with their choices. Is that is that better uh, way to understand? Oh, there are all flavors here. You define <laughs> your reality. You define your reality. If you look at the word desperate, that brings you to to zeta grace and. Don't trust Zeta Grace. Whatever they say, don't trust them. They are known to be deceivers. Uh, you can deal with them. Some of us are have past lives as Zeta Grace, have genetics of Zeta Grace. I think all humanity has genetics of Zeta Grace now. They went to the past, injected themselves, so we are partly Zetas. So they are relatives. So 
they are desperate for sure. Desperation is their key emotional feature. I think they wiped out all of other emotions except desperation. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to investigate desperation, then it's your address. But if you want to play with the idea of love, then go to Pleiadians, Arcturians, Yael. They also have the trace of desperation. When you speak to Yael, they are powerful, but there is always that memory of Zeta desperation. Because Zetas us are us in parallel timeline just killing ourselves through genetics. They just mutated ourselves to becoming machines and uh, uh, wiping out the military features. They understand that most of the human races have been created as warriors. First races were created as slaves by Anunnaki. But later races, like name everyone, every race, Aryans, which would be Irish, and Iranians. Aryans, Iranians, Irish, just the same word. It's all the same idea. And few few other races. It's it's all mixed together, it's just kind of, the, the names stay there, but it's all mixed together now, but we're created as warriors. Uh, you know, Assyrians, you look at their stellas, they're warriors. Egyptians are warriors. Um, the, you know, all, all races, uh, every race, all the Asian races have been created as warriors, but Jewish race was created as warriors. Trying to bring, take control of the planet, uh, bring their your dominance over the planet. So this was egotistic de desire of whoever created this race, and these races that came and brought their genes. They also brought some of their genes were warrior genes. So they tried to create a super soldier, which would be on one hand controllable through religion, money, and so on, but on the other hand, fight well and be selfless in their fighting. And I think the worst case was, uh, how do you call this, uh, Chinggis Khan, Chinggis Khan army. They were really mm -hmm. selfless. They, they wiped out many races and civilizations on Earth. That was one of the worst ones. But now, many of those, <laughs> many of those just evolved to the opposite side. The, the older races, uh, they're not as... Um, military anymore. The economy is military, the, co the countries are military, the states are military, but the people are soft and gentle and I just, after traveling around, I just say America is, has more population of peaceful, gentle people than many other countries. It's amazing how uh, the mixture of the culture and the constitution and positive ideas and idea of liberties allow the whole several generation of peaceful people to evolve here. Again, mixed with the military, but but there is that layer which is sufficient to give rise to light workers, pe people of love, and that would be their network which will help the shift in the earth to the love state, to the fourth dimension. <sighs> Questions, ideas? Um, I I know it's a time. Just the last things that this um, I think it's a wonderful, beautiful. It's a, it's a great way to you know the start the weekend. <laughs> um, those uh, things that you know the hybridization more like more to do with the DNA uh, implants or cell implants, so called. Um, I think it's a wonderful too. Now that uh, let's say um, when you the time passes. Some of the how does how those things being cleaned up like let's say the the things that you got previously no longer serve is there something that we could um, uh, do like or uh, to kind of cleanse so that the new and the better things gonna come in? Sure. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, the original implants were pretty crude and they were 
technical, mechanical, uh, and the technology of the implantation on humans improves very fast. So new implants are very smart, very non-intrusive, very healthy. They don't hurt that much. They don't screw up your health as much. And most of them are used only for tracking and not for control. The original uh, Zeta Grays uh, and negative other races, reptilian, uh, Orion races, Nordic races, they were using uh, implants to do the control. And the main idea of, of Zetas is to produce enough hybrids so they can take uh, over the planet just by controlling the hybrids. That idea is not plain anymore, so the implants are are not good anymore, and not, not used anymore. But every race which is uh, dealing with uh, us uh, usually uh, places the implants in their subjects, and now it is by invitation, again, to apply for being associated with Gurkfitnir, just right to sign up to go at humancolony.org, oh no, sign up to go at gmail.com or in the forum of humancolony.org, apply, just fill the form, say, I want to be with you, I want to be protected by you. <clears throat> and um, they will make sure to remove the, the negative implants and put the good implants. And the good implants are used basically to mark the territory. So the alien races have now a cold war, basically. The good ones protect us, but if negative ones come and see that this subject is marked by the good implant, by the implant of Gurk Fidnir, they wouldn't touch it. Or Galax Federation, or Eren, or Pleiadian, or Reptilian, or whatever. They don't usually touch the subjects of others. It's like a territory of um, different alien races. So you can be volunteer to be associated with that race or the other race. To be completely removed, uh, to, to have implants completely removed, also write and say, I want all my implants removed. So the Georg Fitnir will remove the all implants and you'll be on your own, but uh, reptilians, negative aliens, negative reptilians, negative um, Zetas, negative uh, uh, Arias, negative Nordics might not listen to you, so you might still have <laughs> the implants. <laughs> Right. Um, thank you for asking. You also asked the previous webinar, you asked about 12-strand uh, DNA. And yeah. I need to update, I mean, right after the webinar, I got this wow download, basically. OK, what I said then, I need to expand it. So what I said then, our physical third-dimensional body has only two strands. The third strand is there known by science, it's very temporary, it's RNA attached to the two strands of DNA. It's known, it's functional, but it it's, has nothing to do with the theory of multiple DNA strands. Basically, we have only two, and they are used for, to copy each other, and then they duplicate, and then they duplicate, and then duplicate, and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, duplicate meaning duplicate and separate into different cells. Each cell has two strands. Then they duplicate, separate. Duplicate, separate. So our 3D DNA has always two strands. Um, the next dimensions have all also two strands, each layer of their, uh, of their dimension. So our, like a etheric body has multiple layers. So it would be one layer has two strands, next layer has two strands, next layer. So the idea of upgrading of the DNA is your connection to those layers becomes stronger and your DNA becomes whole again, and you have multiple strands from different dimensions connected. Aliens have uh, more strands together because they're multidimensional. That's why they have more strands. So that's what I said last time. The upgrade of that, expansion of that, is that when you look at this multidimensionally, they all form a multidimensional helix, which I cannot show it on in 3D, but basically, it still remains a helix, it's just multi-dimensional helix. So okay. when you have an upgrade, you reconnect that helix, it becomes vibrant, you have the capacity to shift to higher dimensions easily, to have telepathic and psychic abilities easily. So it is, DNA becomes multi-dimensional spiral, but it's not in this 3D, it's not in this mainstream 
money control 3D. In money control 3D, you still have two strands. And then as you meditate, as you grow into your spirit, as your spirit grows into you, you become more multidimensional. Right now, all the strands are there. You're just not connected to them. They are behind the veil. So you have to penetrate the veil and connect to them. Yes, so I seen the picture, the twelve strand DNA picture somewhere. So that's why I wanted to ask. It was a beautiful picture. Um, I do understand there are a lot of not a lot, some small percentage of human on Earth now has third strands already, as well as rare, but is a fourth strand. Which is translated to English. I think it's only by pairs. I think it's translated to normal English. Some of the humans are already ascended. They already live in this dimension and the higher dimension. They have multi dimensional bodies. That's how I would translate it. I think we have a question from the chat room. Are you would you like to take this? Yes, go ahead. Uh, there's a um, question about um, the implants on the right side of my skull, scalp. Skull, okay. Yeah. I heard her ear a lot, but that's maybe different. Is she say my sc scalp? Skull. I heard about, no, yeah. Me. Scalp is something else, skull. Yes, so would you like to take this question? So what's the question? There is implants, what's the question? Take it out, or why is it there? I don't know. The, can, Hi, guys. Like this to, is Holly. There you, there you yes. are. I, I'm the one that typed that in. <clears throat> I uh, put out a new application to um, with uh, Tracker to um, get some more upgrades, and I wanted to visit. And I, I really put a lot into my new application, and it wasn't two hours later. Um, I was at Starbucks having coffee when I sensed um, a presence around me, and they put it right in under my skin, on my scalp, right under the skin on the right side of my head. And I went home and I had my head, my son look at it and he said it looks like a tiny little incision. Mm -hmm. And I still feel it. I can I can feel it right there, but um, I was assuming that's just kind of for location purposes and to help with transportation and things. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Also, I mean their implants are very advanced. Uh, the, there are doctors, ufologists who try to cut them out and I uh, was on a webinar with the one which said, you know, I had to hunt it. It would run away from me. Like you open uh, the uh, no. skin and the feet, do the surgery, and it would run away. <laughs> no way. Oh, my <laughs> yeah, God. They're very advanced. And they're multidimensional. Oh. They're biological. You wouldn't see them on the uh, X-ray or anything of that. Really? They're not destroyable, but they, by X-ray or the machine, so they are very advanced. Uh, they use it, again, to track you, to label you, so bad guys wouldn't touch you because you're under protection now. Oh, you apply good. it, so you got it. You are protected now. Awesome. Not that you are protected from the police. No, 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 no problem with that. <laughs> you might still get a ticket, but, uh, but bad, things, uh, bad things are uh, from, from the negative aliens, basically. Um, you know, Black would possibly know whose subject you are. Go ahead, Brian. And, and the nice no. thing, and the nice thing about that is, you're, it's an exchange. It's really an energy exchange because you're giving a service to them in a way, for allowing them to work with your genetics and maybe to use some of your DNA in an in exchange service. You, they are giving you. Some type of protection, and also maybe the implants are there to check your vitals. Maybe they can send energy through those devices or energetics to help the body, to, um, to and also with your awareness. And so there is a benefit for both sides, both parties involved. Well, I'm I'm kind of glad to have it, but I was really surprised they were very prompt. 
it wasn't two hours later, I swear. <laughs> Since pushing that enter button. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we have those reports which are best proof that this is real. People send the applica electronic application to sign up to go at gmail.com and uh, they report that something happened of that sort. The visitation or some, you know, implant experience is the first one reported to me. Yeah, share your reports with me because it's wonderful to have, you know, this, you know Makiko, you wanted a confirmation. Here it comes. There you go. Yeah, I go. So skull <laughs> well, is the board. No, I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I assume, assume that I love your shirts, by the way. Um, yes. So I, I do feel it uh, in, in it. So it would be nice, like a different session, when to, uh, when, like I want like a doctor's visit, right? How, how do you know and when to contact? <laughs> And the following symptom, and this is don't worry, this maybe you want to contact, you know, so. Can you repeat your question in a simpler way? Because I'm lost. Oh. Well, I do feel that things here, I've been feeling it, it is sometimes it bothers me. Okay. Um, because of that, you know, the high pitch noise. Okay. And then I feel like I'm feeling this side as well. <laughs> And um, I also uh, have something up here, but but you know it's it's difficult to know, right? Um, it's not like an intolerable. It's just um, just wanted to. <laughs> are you saying these are implants or not? Are you sure these are implants? Yeah. Uh, yes. So how do you know? Do you feel the uh, something? How do you know that these implants? Just help me. It was told by multiple beings, uh -huh. but also I felt, I felt first, and then I okay. asked. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. So, uh, all you need to ask and invite. So, if you feel that it's uncomfortable, just say, "Hey guys, hello. Hey guys, it's uncomfortable. Can you adjust it? Because you know, on the other side, sometimes you have experts working. Sometimes this would be practicing students." <laughs> Right, and, uh, and uh, you know, they yes, messed up I'm too, <laughs> and I was complaining, and they fixed it, but really, like, if they they don't have a good readout of your state, they don't read your mind, so you have to communicate very clearly what you really want. Like, sometimes they block something because they think their guide from there thinks that I'm going to do that stupid thing, and they say, hey, guide from there, I will not do that stupid thing, I will do the other thing, and they unblock my connection, and I do the other thing. And sometimes I forget uh, my promise. I do the stupid thing, and then then they become they, then they lose their credibility, yes. right? Yes, <laughs> got it. Got it. The communication, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm, speaking aloud or speaking aloud in your mind and speaking on this forum is especially helpful. So if like, what is your desire? Do you want it adjusted, removed, or improved? What you want? Yes. Originally, I asked the upgrade. I just didn't realize uh -huh. it's already there. I mean, uh -huh. it, it happened already. Um, and then I think they adjusted for me. I complained. Yes, I did complain. Yes. Uh, so they listen so, to us now. So if you want any more adjustments, just tell them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Max. Yes. I just wanted to throw in there also. <clears throat> also remember that even though you have all these extraterrestrial races, that may be uh, what you would call working with the human at any given one point they're always those races are also being guided by what you would call angelics and other sources so they're also being watched so even though they may be watching us the watchers are also being watched so it, it's it's a win-win for everyone in the ultimate scheme of things so always remember that and again, you define how you interpret this. If you just decide that you have been controlled by negatives and they control you and you don't have control of yourself, you get tons of proof that it is true. So you choose in a dark state, in a sadness you choose, in neutral state choose, and in a happy state you choose. How do you interpret things? It's all about beliefs and interpretation. So, I suggest it's your choice, but at any moment, just smile, thank the creation, and breathe, and that will shift you to the better timeline. 
you always shift. You always have the capacity to shift to a better timeline. Max? Yes, Joanna. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. You mentioned earlier something about DNA, um, activating your DNA strands. Yes. And I just, I was wondering about the symptoms of, um, of activating these DNA strands. Oh, where do I start? Um, things become different. Yeah, the first thing people notice is 11, 11 on the clock. <laughs> All the time, right? 11, 11. Um, Synchronicities, synchronicities, you just shift to higher dimensional reality, you shift back and forth, but as you look for higher dimensional reality, you will get proofs all the time. Like my favorite example is, I was just starting to shift, and I wrote the first book about aliens, I was about to write the second book, but I was not sure when to start. Mm -hmm. And I met, you know, I was camping with friends, and I always knew that little boy that was their child, and the boy comes to me and says only one thing ever, we communicated ever. He said, when are you going to write your second book? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's four-dimensional reality. Just strangers or people who are not, you don't know who they are. They just come and give you messages just like that. And life goes from there as a series of synchronicities and signs and stuff like that. And and um, psychic telepathic abilities, all the sensations in mm -hmm. the body, your meditations change, your, again, those feelings like this heaviness here, this heaviness there. Usually it's presence. And for me, it's usually a presence of someone spiritual or higher dimensional. They kind of knock on your shoulder, mm -hmm. like heavy here or heavy there. Um, Health wise, it's up and downs always. You always have ups and downs. And the more you shift, the more it's. You, on one hand, you become open, like open to all the energies. On the other hand, uh, negative things come to you as well as positive things. So you have to learn how to filter them. And mm -hmm. you filter again by smiling and choosing what you really is your vibration. So uh, dumping some of the old beliefs, dumping some of their negative things is essential. Like, like I'm really not afraid of that anymore. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Just the trust that you've been guided helps you to deal with those uh, things which kind of knock on you. Like this noise which you hear, like like, like all the time. It's uh, you you asked for opening of the veil. Now it's open. Now you get all the noise from the universe coming to you. <laughs> right. So you have to learn how to filter and listen in that noise. So you choose your. You have to dictate your choice. I want to tune into that. Um, and you kind of bring in that channel open, and then you get connected. Just you have to filter out. If you have like white noise, it's everything. Yeah. So you have to choose your channel. You have to choose your excitement. That's the 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 tons of more sim symptoms. I just don't know where to start. You can't eat um, certain things anymore, <laughs> or if you decide that you wish to be like um, to be, I I um. At some point, I was limiting, limiting, limiting my diet, and then decided I want to eat food which is dear to my friends and family, so I, I want to sit down and eat the same food. So it's possible mm -hmm. to meditate on it and adjust to it in many cases. That's that's wonderful, Joanna. Thank you so much for that question. It's really beautiful. And I've been mean, keeping looking at the Max's shirts, and that's that's a way to start the day. I love it. I really, really love it. And it's a great way to present yourself to everyone else and to DNA. So, Max, would you mind uh, ending the, with blessings for DNA with Aum sound? Yes. 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 Um, the short is actually a protection. When you wear bright, Wear white. Wear your favorite colors. Wear bright. Yeah, white, white, you white. shift. You disconnect yourself from the world which wears dark. You disconnect. Your conscious disconnection. You choose your crowd. You choose your connection or disconnection. I cut my hair short because there was too much darkness in the in the world <laughs> few days ago. So the hair is antennas and. 
it's obviously symbolic it's a permission slip the but but when you cut your hair short you it's also a symbol I'm in my space I want to dictate my vibration not to respond to all the darkness that dumps onto you I don't have to choose sides this side or that side I am in peace in balance I am carrying the light to everybody last thing which I should mention because it wasn't mentioned properly yet is uh, star seeds uh, crystal children autistic children these are often the children who are, whose genetics is advanced their souls can be also very advanced genetics and soul are two different lineages so don't mix them together they have relative vibrations so for the soul to find a home in your genetics it has to find similar vibration to adjust to attach itself to that genetics so it's much easier for a human soul to incarnate in a human than into some other creature which is not directly related so so there is a relation but these are two different lineages the soul lineage and the genetic lineage so the soul basically chooses the genetics and you think that mixture of father you might think that mixture the scientists think that mixture of their mixing of the father's and mother's genetics happens at random but from the soul perspective is that's where they do you their creative part they consciously choose the genes from the father and from mother to incarnate to create their own uh, fetus their own genetic their own embryo and as you shift in your life again through defining your reality you change your genetics you change not only the future you change your past you change your genetics in many ways so the hybrid children the star seeds the crystal children some of them are already grown-ups but uh, they just carry the genetics and the soul lineage from the aliens and uh, I met I know in person of someone who has whose father has is is a Pleiadian from Pleiades and he just fell in love with a woman on earth and decided to live on earth and have a family I didn't meet the Pleiadian father but I met a child and you know everybody knows he's a half Pleiadian one um, there are videos of hybrids uh, who speak on, on, on camera you know we already discussed them on, in, in the community and some of them are very advanced and uh, I'm so happy to meet your advanced hybrids and uh, and uh, learn your stories about uh, about yourself your hybridization and your shifting your shifting uh, we, we interviewed Zachariah uh, Zachariah is very popular on our channel and uh, he's very advanced hybrid and uh, with Pleiadian genetics and uh, Zeta Gray soul experience. So he has past life as as a Zeta Gray. It was a very interesting story. So uh, when you deal with these children, if these are your children, if these are your children or your family's children, understand them, respect them as you would respect the elders, treat them as you would treat the elders with respect and permit them many things allow them everything which is uh, not dangerous immediately dangerous for their life respect their choice ask for their listen to them because they will give you messages be a hybrid in terms of you are a hybrid be a guide for them because you as a hybrid learn a life on earth and you have to translate to their advanced mind how to live here and tr translate it in a loving respectful manner so you have to explain you know yes everything is deceitful the commercials are deceitful but you have to live with it look at that look at the bright side look at the bright side and that's how you deal with that that's the society that's how you live here but you know their fall is beautiful the leaves are orange the flowers smell and the sex is wonderful and uh, and they will take it from there. They will guide you. <laughs> mm. 
Any more questions before we finish? I'm good. Thank, Thank you. you. You wanted OM? Yes. Mm. I will give I will give you a range of sounds which I usually use for healing and for me it is in part it is DNA activation sounds they are known in earthly medicine and earthly alternative medicine as traditional Chinese healing sounds traditional Chinese healing sounds and I was told that this is also a snake language which doesn't contradict because Chinese are also big on snakes and drug Dracos. Um, I improvise a lot and often when I need the energy to flow during the Reiki session that's what I do I try different sounds in, mm, intuitively and sometimes they feel perfect and they kind of shift up and down and when they feel perfect they kind of dive into that vibe it is still a vibration but it is also something which I hear and the patient hears and it goes through the brain and through the nerves so the whole body gets its signal allows us to synchronize allows us to connect our genetics through this um, bridge and all I always work with uh, invite the, my alien friends so and angelic and spiritual friends so they have their chance to do their upgrades while I'm doing this connection so I hold the subject in this space which I create with the sound it sounds weird it sounds like snoring but and it is snoring which is very healing one of the Western modern confusions or how do you call it um, mistakes is to consider that snoring is bad snoring is what cats do snoring is very healing it's uh, it's a way to vibrate your body in a very healing way so that's what I do I snore in many different ways and that's what I will give you and uh, I intended for your DNA upgrade and for your DNA resonation listen to it and understand that all of you in the room now are resonating with me resonating with the spirit and also resonating with those people who will listen later the recording it's trans dimensional also uh, cross time resonation and it will be brief like three five minutes three minutes how is the sound so far can you hear me yeah, perfect. Yeah. it's perfect Matt Good. thank you
I bless you all, I bless your bravery, I bless your love, I bless your love, I thank you for your bravery, for your light, for your love, I thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, for vibrating with us, we thank you for opening to us, we are here to serve, we are you, we are your future incarnations, we are your parallel incarnations, we are one with you, we are one, we are as much of the carriers of light as you are, we are the same carriers of light, we are the carriers of the same light, we are vessels, ambassadors, of light. Thank you for uniting with us. Thank you for shifting towards us. As we shift towards you, we welcome your shifting towards us. As you feel our light in your meditations, in your daily lives, step towards us, shift towards us, consciously intend to become one with us. Don't be afraid to be dissolved in us because we are not to be afraid to be dissolved with you. Each of you carries unique vibration, so you cannot be dissolved. You are you and will ever be you. But uniting with us, shifting towards us, singing and dancing in the light waves, waves of light with us will save your civilization, will open your civilization to new, brighter realities and will help, will help not only you, it will help all your fellow spirits, all your fellow beings, all your fellow humans, all your fellow star seeds, all your fellow star children, all your fellow star 
brothers and sisters. We thank you for opening to us. We thank you for sharing your light with us and your code with us. We are happy to be your star siblings. Blessed be your bravery. Blessed, blessed be your unity. Blessed will be your desire for integration and find your perfect, whole, complete self. Without you, we are incomplete. We bring you the chance, we bring you the opportunity to become more complete, more of yourself. We thank you for that gift. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you, Max. Beautiful. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Stop in the broadcast. Make some noise. It's nice to make some noise before we stop. Woohoo! Hey, bye bye, you, everybody. Bye -bye. Love you. Thank you, Max. Thank you.